Hello there, welcome to Craft with B. So this is week three of our 12 weeks of Christmas stitch along that we're using the gorgeous Tilda Maple Farm fabric for. Um, so if you, um, this, if this is the first time that you've seen one of these projects, you can go back on the channel and have a look at what we're doing. But we're doing one project every Sunday for 12 weeks. They're a bit more uh, of an involved project than our normal weekly challenge projects we're doing. But um, it is using this gorgeous Maple Farm fabric that was released worldwide on the 1st of September. So today's project is going to be a little sewing roll. And the idea of this is that it's it will contain all your supplies that you can take on a, a little trip in the car or it'll be a lovely little gift for somebody. So what you'll need to do first up is to download the template sheet. You'll find a link to that down in the description box. Um, you'll also find the, the cutting measurements down in there as well. Um, if you don't get time to write them down, you can find them written down in there. You can, of course, also download all the information from the Tilda Lovers group on Facebook. If you're not already a member, just pop along to Facebook, do a search for Tilda Lovers, and you will find us. And there's a couple of questions that you'll need to answer. That's just to stop the spammers in our group. So um, if you do that, then you can come on in and we have a great time in there. We have lots of fun. We do swaps, um, lots of chit chat all week. And yeah, it's just a great place to be. A very, very fun corner of the internet. Okay, so um, I'm going to refer to a couple of my other tutorial videos throughout this because it's, this project has binding. It also has an iron-on transfer, and I'm not going to run through those things with you again in this video. I will link those videos down in the description box for you as well so that you can um, find out my techniques and methods for doing that. So what you'll need to do is to download from the pattern sheet the two-stitchery um cotton reels there now you can choose which one it is that you use um, I've chosen this one here you might need to change your measurements slightly if you're going to be using this one because we're actually going to cut it down later on um, now I used um, the iron-on transfer that came in the accessory pack which is available from kittyrosecottage.com so if you want to buy the iron-on transfers and things you can find a very small little kit in there you can also find a little kit for the iron-on transfer method that I use, which is foolproof. Um, so I have gone ahead and done that. You will also need to use a variegated thread to stitch it with. Now I'm using a Cosmo Seasons 9010. It's a beautiful um, muted tone variegated thread. And um, if you've bought the accessory kit, once again, you will have this thread in your kit. Now you need to cut off a length of this thread around about the length of your arm and then you need to separate it down so you're only working with two strands of thread. There are six in embroidered embroidery cotton so you'll just need to use two of them. Um, and so you'll also need a four inch square of white hanky linen. You apply your stitchery on there whichever way you're going to be using whether it's an iron-on transfer or whether or not you're going to use a light box. Um, you'll find on the pattern sheet that there is a reverse of this image so that you can use an iron-on transfer pen and I have a method video for that um, which I'll also link down below but I've gone ahead and stitched it I've done the whole lot in a back stitch very very simple stitch and I've used that variegated thread and just two strands of it so um, now the reason why we're using a four inch square is because um, anything smaller than that is just too hard to handle. Now I did use a little bit of a lightweight a stitchery stabilizer on the back of there. That's entirely up to you. Um, I suggest that you don't use Parland for this one because we're going to be cutting this out and uh, applying it on. So we need to uh, make sure it's not too bulky for that. So that's why I've used a lightweight one there. But you don't have to use one. Um, you, you could be able to get away with with not for this small project I'm sure so uh, do that so once you've done your stitchery just pop it to one side you won't need that right away and now I'm going to give you the cutting instructions so you'll need to cut the template um, off the pattern sheet and it's just got a curve on it so we're going to need to use that shortly so we'll just pop that off to one side you'll also need to cut a two and a half inch square of the tilde ear uh, easy fix paper so I think it's called tilde fix um, if you bought the kit you'll have that in there once again it's an applique paper a bit like flies fix easy fix there's quite a number of names that can be used for this but you'll need this because this is what we're going to use to applique on our stitchery so you need to have that a two and a half inch square you'll also need a piece of felt because um, you're going to use this as a bit of a needle roll and I have cut this to two and a half inches by two inches now I used a 
um, a little fancy rotary wheel that I have for my one of my rotary cutters. Um, I can't think what this is called, like a pinking shear type rotary cutter. But if you've got pinking shears or anything, you can use them. If not, just you cut it normally. I just sort of wanted to make mine a little bit more fancy. So that's what I used for that. Okay, you also need a piece of ribbon. We're using seam binding. This is 22 inches long, which is around about 55 centimetres. And that looks white on the video, but mine I'm using is a little bit of a lavender colour. I think in the kits you've got um, the ones that are sort of a bit muted and match the fabrics. Now you need to choose three fabrics from the uh, Maple Farm range. And of course we're using a Fat Eighth bundle. So um, I've chosen this one here for my outer fabric. I've chosen this one for my inner fabric and I've chosen this one here for my binding. And now that binding is going to be sitting against your large print. So um, you'll need to decide which way you're going to go. Of course, a, a smaller print is much better for this. The reason I've chosen this mustardy one is because there is some mustard in these flowers and I thought it would just um, hopefully bring it out a little bit. Now, let me run through the measurements of these. So now the parlan um, I've put in is optional. I think it's going to give it a bit of body and um, I really do think that you need something in between the layers. It wasn't allowed for in the um, kit. You will have enough to, to cut some, but you probably need to replace it down the track. Um, but you can use just quilt batting. You can use whatever you want, really. I'm just using Parlan because that's what I always use and I like the fact that it's fusible um, and it's yeah very, very easy to use. So you'll need to cut an outer piece, a lining piece, and a parland piece. Now these are all going to measure 16 inches in length by five and a half inches in width. Um, so you need the three of them, the outer, the inner, and your parland or wadding or whatever it is you're going to use. You'll also need to cut a little strip that is two inches wide by 12 inches in length from your lining fabric. This is going to be used as a little binding. And then you'll also need to cut um, two pieces exactly the same now these are from your outer and your inner fabrics and they measure four and three quarter inches by five and a half um, and they're going to be used for a pocket and then finally you'll need to cut two strips that are 22 inches long which is the length of your fat eighth by two inches in width and these are going to be your binding strips now i'm not going to tell you um, how to do the binding as I mentioned before because there is an instructional video for that so I'm going to go ahead and join these as I would um, normally and I'm going to get them ready for binding and I'm going to also go and iron this piece here in half so that that is ready for binding so you're going to fold it in half along the length with the wrong sides facing so you're going to match those side raw edges and just give that a press uh, and then bring that back. And then the other thing that I want you to do is to take your two little pieces, which these are going to be a pocket. Um, so you're going to lay them on top of one another with the right sides together. And then you're just going to sew along one of the five and a half inch sides with a quarter inch seam, of course, and then bring that back. So let me just run through that again. You're going to go and fold this one at the ironing board with the wrong sides together. You're also going to stitch this one down, one of the long lengths there. And then I want you to take your fusible wadding and your outer piece, and I want you to fuse that together as well. And then we'll come back for the next step. Okay, all these jobs are done. So I've got my binding there. It's all ready to go as per the other video. So I'll just set that aside. We have folded this one in half and pressed it. And we have sewn these two little strips here, sorry, the two little squares together, you can see there. And now I've just folded them over and given them a nice press so that the sewn line is there on the bottom. And I also have the pile and fused to the back of this. Now what we're going to do with this is we're going to make a sandwich. We're going to lay the lining down like that. And then we're going to lay the outside piece on top. Um, and we are just going to make what we call a sandwich. And we're just going to pop a couple of pins in one end of it here. Just so that it's nice and firm together and that we don't have to stress about it moving at all. And then we're going to take our template of our curved end and we're just going to lay that on the top there so that the top part of the curve 
sits up here and then we're just going to draw around that curve. I'm just going to use a pencil. doesn't matter what you use because it's going to get covered up. It won't, it won't affect the fabric at all. Okay, so hopefully I can see that. I can. I'll just grab myself a pair of scissors. And then we're just going to chop it along that drawn line there. It's going to give us our curved, our curved end. Oops, grab the wrong scissors, but anyway, any scissors will do. So there we go. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is just pop that aside just for a second. We're going to take that piece of hanky linen with the stitchery on it and we're going to trim it down. Um, I'll just find a smaller ruler here. This one will do. So we're going to cut it down to two and a half inches square. Um, so I'll go and do that. But then I want you to take it over to the ironing board and I want you to fuse the piece of applique paper onto the back of it. Best way to actually cut this out is to think into yourself okay so this has got to be two and a half inches square so the core uh, sorry the center piece is going to be at one and a quarter so if you find your one and a quarter inch mark and you line it up to around about the center of your stitchery that is going to give you where you will be cutting your two and a half inches so that way you can actually center the stitchery and you don't have to, the fear of it not being centered and you can do the same here so we've got these two parts here so to me the center would be around about where that thread is coming off the spool there so we'll line that up with the inch and a quarter so it would be around about there and then this will be around about where the two and a half inches is and there we go. So that's lovely and centered. And that's the best and easiest way to actually center it, I feel. Okay, so as I said, we're going to go and fuse this now with um, a hot iron and to the back of our stitchery. Okay, so there we go. So now we're going to take the front of the needle roll and we're going to measure up here around about three and a half inches. So just use your ruler and find whereabouts three and a half inches is. So it's about there. So we're just going to give it a little crease with our fingers. We don't actually want to mark it. We're just then going to fold it at around about that three and a half inch mark there, like so. And that is where we're going to actually pop our stitchery. So now to get the backing paper off, you just give it a little bit of a tear and then just peel off the backing paper. And then you can apply this with some heat around about where you want it to go. Now, remember that we're going to actually be putting some binding on here. So we need to make sure that it's not too close to the bottom edge of our curve. Um, but I think that it's going to look okay around about there. So take it off to your ironing board, give it a nice hot fuse and then come back. Okay, so then I want you to take out the lining. You don't need the lining there at this point. And take this over to the sewing machine and stitch around it. So we're going to have a raw edge around our applique. Okay, so mine's all sewn down there. So you could at this point sew some little buttons um, on the corners, um, pop a little sewing machine on, whatever it is that you want to decorate the front of that with. Now is the time to do that. Uh, okay, so what I want you to do next is to take your, your little pocket there and I want you to take it over to the sewing machine, take your 12 inch strip that's been folded in half and then I want you to sew along the top there like you would be sewing on a binding and um, then you can i'm just going to snip that off a little bit longer than i need it so we're going to sew that on and then uh, we're also going to take our piece of outer and we are going to pop our lining back on once we've decorated it so make sure that you do your decorating and then i want you to so the remaining little strip there that you've got, I want you to sew that to the bottom down there as well as a binding. 
Okay, so then you can just take your scissors and trim off the excess. So this is our little pocket, so we'll just trim off the excess on that one. And then this is the bottom of our needle roll. Same thing, just trim that off. So then just take it to the ironing board and iron that part there out flat. And then you are going to turn it over to the other side like that. And you're going to hand stitch it down. You can, of course, do it on the machine if you wish. Uh, I like the look of the hand stitching because you don't actually see any of the stitches. And so obviously we're going to do exactly the same thing to our little pocket as well. So if you don't want to do that, and then we'll come back. Okay, so I've sewn down the binding on the pocket. You can see there. I've also decorated my, my little stitchery there. I've popped a little tiny button which coordinates in the corner, all four corners. And I've also stitched down that piece of binding which is now on the top. Okay, so now it's time to separate these two pieces out again. So we're just going to be working with that lining for a moment. So we're going to stitch down our piece of felt. Now you can stitch it around all four sides. You can just stitch it across the top here. You can decide which way that it needs to go, but you just need to pop a pin in it. And it needs to be uh, around about, let's measure it for you. Right about an inch and a half from the top of that curve okay so i'm just going to stitch mine straight across the top there so that i can use it as a flap now while you're at it the other thing i want you to do i'm just going to turn that up the other way so that you can actually get some perspective there and see what i'm doing um so now we're going to actually put this pocket in place now you can see it's just off camera here but here's the bottom of our the bottom of our little needle roll and we're going to measure up from here seven inches so we'll just take our ruler and we will measure get the seven inch mark and pop that right down there at the bottom you can see that it's there right at the bottom so i'll just slide that down so that you can see and now we're going to pop that pocket in and we're going to pop the bottom of that pocket around about where the seven inch mark goes around about six and a half seven inches that's what you need to sort of pop it and then we're going to pop a pin in it so i'll pop a pin there and we'll pop another one here and we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew it down these two sides here with about a scant one eighth of an inch seam. So just that teeny tiny bit, we're just adhering it down so that it doesn't move when it comes time to put it all together. So we're gonna stitch across the top of that and then we're gonna stitch down the sides of this. And of course, this is in a single form again. We've got the rest of our needle roll here um, laying up like so. So if you go and do that and then we'll come back and then we'll start putting all this together. Okay, so there we have it. So we've got a bit of stitching. Now you can, of course, cover that up with a bit of lace or whatever it is that you want to pop on there, some rick rack, uh, whatever. But the other thing that we're going to do now is we're going to stitch along the bottom of the pocket. So we're just going to do a top stitch all the way along the bottom of that pocket. Uh, and then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the front part. So still keep these two pieces separate. We're going to take the front part and we are going to get our measuring ruler once again. And we're going to measure from the edge, the edge of the front of our flap there. And we're going to measure six inches. So about six inches there. We're going to find the middle and that is where we're going to sew down our piece of ribbon. Okay, so I'm going to go this way. We'll find the halfway point. Find our halfway point there of our ribbon. And then the ribbon is going to lay across the body of our roll. And we're just going to pop a pin down there and we're going to stitch it in place. Straight across there. Okay, so that's our next two jobs on the machine. We're going to sew the ribbon down and then we're going to sew across the bottom of this pocket. And we can decorate this at this point as well if you wish. Okay, so I've sewn a bit of trim across the top of my felt. I've sewn the bottom of the pocket down and then I have stitched on the ribbon. So we need to get the ribbon um, up out of the way at this point, but what we're going to do next is we're going to fold up the bottom of our needle roll. 
So we're going to measure um, from the bottom of the needle roll here. And the measurement is going to be in the vicinity of three and a half inches. So if you can find um, the three and a half inch point on your ruler, pop it along the bottom. And then we're just going to give that a bit of a crease with your fingernail. And then we can see where that is. And then we're going to fold that up like that. And you'll see that it sits just underneath that pocket. Okay. So we're just going to pop a couple of clips just to hold that there in place. And now you can see how this needle roll is going to work. So it's going to fold like that. And then it's going to fold like that. And then your ribbon is going to be your closure. Like so. Okay. What we're going to do with that pocket folded up the way it is, we're going to sew on our binding. So you need to get that ribbon um, out of the way. And what I'm going to do with mine is I am just going to fold it up like that. And I'm just going to pop a pin through all the layers and just to hold it there out of the way because we don't want to sew that in to our binding. And just make sure that the body of everything is nice and flat, that it's all nice and flat together. It is. So as I said, just pop that pin through your ribbon and we'll just keep that there out of the way. Okay, so now we're going to sew this binding on. And as I said, there is a separate binding tutorial. I'm going to start stitching mine around about halfway. We're going to stitch, oops, the wrong way. We're going to stitch from the outside and we're going to stitch our binding all the way around. Now it's going to be a bit tricky getting around this curve but that is absolutely fine. You will be fine doing that. We're going to mitre the corners. When you get to these two corners down here, they're going to be mitered. And then you're going to get back here to this point as well. So you'll see here that this piece here is quite thick. Take it to the iron and give it a good press to make it nice and crisp. Um, and you'll find it a lot easier to sew. And then once we have sewn that binding on, we'll come back and we in the final stages. Okay, so there we go. We have it all done and you can see my start and finish there as per my binding video. What we're going to do with this curve here, because it's it's not going to sit properly, we're actually going to clip that curve all the way around before we sew our binding down. As we would when we're doing anything else in sewing that is circular, it is going to help that fabric to get that little bit of extra room to sit. It really does need to actually be able to sit in that curve properly. Now, don't clip too close, of course, to your stitching line because um, you could quite easily snip through it and you'll have a hole. So just, you know, come back a little bit from the stitching line. But just cutting that fabric is going to give it that little bit of extra. And you'll feel it as you're cutting it. You can feel it releasing. It's actually going, oh, my gosh, that's not so tight now. Thank you. <laughs> that's how it sort of feels. It sort of gives it that little bit of extra room to sort of sit. Now, of course, um, if you're worried that you've got too much bulk in that seam line, if you've gone a little bit further out than a quarter of an inch, you can trim it. Don't trim too much away though, because you do need that bulk there. That is your guide to actually stitching down your uh, binding. So what we're going to do is to stitch it all down by hand. I do suggest that you iron it first to get that nice crisp edge along here. So if you take it off to your ironing board and do that. Um, of course, I like to use binding clips when I'm doing my sewing, so I'm going to just bind, uh, sorry, use the binding clips like so, and then I'm just going to sit and hand stitch it, and then I'll come back and show you the finished product. And there we have it. We have the finished little um, product there. So I've got lots of little bits and pieces that I can pop inside my little pockets embroidery thread we've got some gorgeous little tilde pins in there and so all you need to do is just to fold up your keep you in there properly yep so just fold it up and then you can just simply tie it up and then you have your beautiful little sewing roll so very simple to make a few steps um but i'm sure that you you'll be able to do it without a problem the stitchery obviously is optional. You don't have to do the stitchery. I just think it's a nice little touch to have a little sewing theme stitchery on the front there. Um, so I hope you enjoy making it. If you have any issues, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. 
um, and I'd love to see your finished product. So once you're finished, just pop your photo in the Tilda Lovers group on Facebook and I look forward to seeing them all. Bye for now.